we are here tonight to have our November uh, book discussion. And November is a time of giving thanks, and it's a time for giving or thinking about giving for the holidays. So uh, first of all, we're going to talk about how our Thanksgivings this year are probably going to be a lot different. We're probably going to be having dinner with only those that we live with. Um, and we may be, um, I don't know if, I think my kids and I are going to get together after we eat because nobody likes to watch, listen to anybody chew. <laughs> and we'll be doing uh, the virtual Zoom meeting or on our phones with uh, Facebook Messenger. There are a whole lot of ways that we can still be in touch with people across the nation. So um, I think we should be kind of like birds. And if we have food and we have shelter from the rain and cold, and we maybe get a sunny day, it's going to be a great day to be thankful for. And then the ability to talk to people across many, many miles. We have to keep thinking of those birds that are still trekking south to get to Mexico, Central America, and South America. And um, so it's, it's kind of a way to put us in a perspective of what birds are going through during this time too. Um, it's been a challenging year, very challenging year in many, many different ways. But I think if we go by the uh, wear a mask, keep your social distance, and um, stay at home this holiday, we should be able to weather the storm. It's just been a long, long stormy season. Um, all of our agencies, National Audubon Society is telling us that, you know, um, they are looking to have Christmas bird count this year, and they're very hopeful that we will have a big year, that people will see it as a way to get out, get some air, get some exercise, maybe some sun, and do something, experience something that isn't sitting on our dust. So um, first off tonight, we're going to talk about uh, our authors that we've had uh, for our first three meetings of um, of uh, the book discussion, or the book club. Our first uh, author was Joy Kaiser, who uh, kept us very enthralled with her uh, story about the Jones family and their daughter, Genevieve, who started a um, illustrated book of nests and eggs for the 140 birds in Ohio uh, in the 1870s. She finished, and she finished very few. Her mother made it a task to finish uh, more of those. So since this is our holiday gift giving, um, kind of these are the kind of books that we think are really kind of nice books to give or get, um, I am going to turn it over to Drina, one of our uh, members who's here tonight and she said that her son's girlfriend gave her the book for Christmas one year. So I'm going to let her tell you a little bit about that book and then she'll be going on to tell about the book that she is going to share with you tonight that she thinks would be a good book to give or get this holiday season. Take it away. On mute. It's a large book 
which, you know, you think of gift books as often being special and maybe perhaps big. And it's, off, it's also so beautifully illustrated with so many um, of the bird's nests and also of the eggs. And it's a, I have found it's the kind of book to look at just a little bit at a time because it's, the artwork is so beautiful and detailed. It's just trying to take it a little bit in at a time. And again, what's fun for us here in Cleveland is that the author uh, worked at the Natural History Museum of Cleveland and the book actually emerged because she happened to start work there and saw uh, one of the illustrations in a case in her very first day working at the museum. And so such a coincidence like that is, is makes this kind of fun. And uh, it connects us to right here in Cleveland, which is wonderful. So um, it is a beautiful, a really beautiful book. The other book that I'm recommending, I received as a gift, too, from my son. And it is for for those of you who are interested in maybe nature in general, but also plants, it's called The Cabaret of Plants by Richard Maybe, and he's, I did not know him before. Do you guys know him? He is uh, an English naturalist, and it seems like he's fairly well known. Well, this book is just, uh, it's a compendium and a history of what the title says plants but because plants are so connected with everything in the world it's also about so many other things including natural history geology geography history uh, religion and how plants have evolved over uh, you know millions and well, billions of years. I have to say that uh, since I'm recently retired, um, I have so much more time to read and to read carefully. And so for this book, it's, it's just a delight because there are so many things that he talks about that are of such great interest that it takes you off in different tangents. And so, again, like I think I've said before, I'm just hooked up to the internet when I'm reading and I can then explore what he's talking about. As an example, I think a lot of us are familiar with the lotus flower and also with um, aquatic plants. And he spends time talking about how in the world these plants emerge. You know, they come out of swamps. They come out of yuck and muck and mud, and they don't have a drop of mud on them. So he explains how the uh, plant construction and the physiology of the plant is such that nothing can stick to the leaves. And so this beautiful flower can emerge completely clean. And uh, he talks about these kind of little incidences with such great... Um, curiosity and delight that it, it's just, it, it, I'm captivated by it. So um, it's, it's kind of slow going because I am looking up so many things. For example, I know nothing about really uh, English, the uh, geography of England and all the different counties and I'm trying to figure out where he is, where he's uh, you know, when he's talking about things. So I'm looking up a lot of things and getting to see a lot of the English countryside. Um, but he's extremely knowledgeable. So it's a book, I think, that um, for, for natural history lovers and also uh, for those who have a great love for plants. He, he talks not a whole lot about birds, but um, I'm only um, into the third chapter, so I have a ways to go. And I may talk about this in every book club meeting for a while because it's so slow going. <laughs> but I'm enjoying it. It's, it's really wonderful. So again, the Cabaret of Plants and the, the, by, 
the, by, the title below that is 40,000 Years of Plant Life and the Human Imagination by Richard Maybe. Going in the wrong place by my button. Oh, that is a fantastic book. I hope you do bring it back again for a book discussion because it sounds really interesting. It will be interesting if he, uh, in the book later on, starts talking about uh, birds and, and mm -hmm. other wi wildlife that might live uh, mm -hmm. in the plants if they're shrubs or whatever. That mm -hmm. sounds like a really great, fantastic book. It is. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's really... That's really, really wonderful. So, um, Betsy left the room, <laughs> and I thought I was going to go to a different slide, but I think what we'll do is I have three books that were all gifts to me, um, and I uh, thought that I would say, okay, these are the books that I started out with, and uh, uh, my first book is uh, put out by the Rodell Press, and I don't know if you've heard of the Rodell Press, but mm -hmm. they have a huge series of gardening books and birding books and plant books. It's just a, a whole, they have an institute, and it talks about, or, they talk about organic farming. It shows you in this book how to make your own mulch. It's It's very interesting. And um, it's by Sally Roth, and she says underneath the A to Z guide to feeders, seed mixes, projects, and treats. So uh, basically, it goes through and it talks about the birds and what time of year you'll find them and what they like as a seed mix. I mean, they talk about like cardinals with the sunflowers, but they also like a mix of other things as well uh, with peanuts. And um, I don't know who would spend the money to give uh, cardinals pine nuts, but <laughs> it does mention those. Um, so I think if you have pine trees, you may have some kind of nutty kind of thing that they would like. Uh, but it then goes um, to projects you can make. Um, it talks about water features and how to make a pond in the back of uh, back of your property. It talks about uh, water features and how small or large they can be and what kind of a a good size for that. It also talks about how to make um, homemade bird feeders and some nesting boxes as well. It's really a, a it is an encyclopedia of uh, backyard birding, I think. And and then it talks about like this this time of year. And I've always tried to I always like to do it with uh, my nieces and nephews when they were smaller and now my grandchildren, is we always make pine cone feeders, which are really very easy. All you need is um, pine cones, peanut butter, and a little bit of bird food, and you just put the peanut butter on the, um, I don't know what those are called, I know they're not petals, but on the pine cones, and then you just roll it in the bird food and hang it up with a piece of yarn in your yard. and. And we've done that for several years, and it's real fun to do. So it's a good thing that you can use. It's a whole family book, so you could make it for the whole family. Then the next book I got was uh, the Bird Watcher's Bible. This is a National Geographic book, mm -hmm. and it's edited by Jonathan hmm, Alderer. And it... It starts, I mean, it's a whole world book. It starts uh, probably in Europe, I think is what it does. Then it goes to Africa and South America. It There's one section in the book that tells you the 10 most uh, interesting bird nests in the Amazon. And mm -hmm. so then it starts there. Well, then it comes to North America. And it starts kind of um, dealing down a little bit. It, it talks about 
what you put in um, <clears throat> what's in the Rocky Mountains, what's uh, in the Northeast, Midwest, and then it starts saying how to be a birder. So the third section is how to be a birder, and it talks about starting small, that you need a pair of binoculars and a book and a pencil to uh, write down your observations, where you see the birds, and, and those kinds of things. And then the last section goes to your backyard and how you can attract birds and um to your backyard and so that you can sit in the comfort of your own home and not have to travel to go see the birds that you would like to uh, see. And I think that's a really good book for now uh, with COVID-19. It kind of takes us all over the world so that we can see all these, these uh, beautiful birds. And they also, for the ones in America, they used um, John James Audubon's uh, drawings, his paintings. So there's some beautiful illustration in this book. And then in another section of the book, they used uh, Usted, uh, Usted Munzer's uh, miniature paintings that he did in the 1600s. And those, I believe, are mostly European birds. But um, it's really a beautifully well done book and would be I I really am glad it's in my library and uh, so that's my second book and then the third book I had to talk about is since I am not as mobile as I used to be I'm trying to build your backyard wildlife garden this book talks about birds but not only birds, it talks about reptile, reptiles and amphibians, how to uh, attract toads to your uh, backyard, how to make a water feature so that you can uh, have water all year long for your uh, critters. It talks about small mammals. It, it gets into bears and deer. Um, I didn't, I've never really delved into that part because I really don't want bears and deer in my <laughs> urban yard. So I'm not I'm not really into that one. But it also talks about butterflies, moths and insects and bees. And the illustrations, I'm not sure this is going to work, but I'm going to try. I'm just going to look here for an illustration of showing how yeah, I don't know. Let me see. Yeah, okay. This is two whole pages of bees, mm -hmm. and they've drawn bees. And to see how what you can do, how to uh, recognize them, but what they are, what they're doing. So it it shows you insects. It shows moths. Shows butterflies. It shows birds. And it it talks about. Uh, how building a whole little biodiverse ecosystem in your own landscaping is uh, is is doable, and probably I think it's a whole lot of fun. So uh, this year, uh, I am going to be trying to to add some things into my uh, landscape to do some of these things. So that's the third book I have for adults. Uh, Betsy, you're back. Do you want to do the uh, uh, other authors uh, yeah, yeah, that I've we got... had in the? Okay. Yeah, yeah. That'll be fine. I'll just go through the slides. Hang on just a moment, and I'll share my desktop. All right. So, um, Darina, you had mentioned that the September um, book author, which was Joy Kaiser, and then I'm going to pick up uh, where you where you left off there, and I want to remind everyone that uh, Katie Fallon joined us in October, I believe. Is that right, Gloria? Yes, yes. Oh. Katie, Katie was with us in uh, October, right. Right. 
And um, so anyway, so and the book that Katie spoke about was The Vulture, The Private Life of an Unloved Bird. And uh, Gloria, actually, who is here this evening, uh, had gotten the book from the library uh, and talked about it a little bit. Do you have, like, just a couple sentences you could say about the book, Gloria? Sure, I think I could. Um, what I liked about the book was that Katie wrote a, a little story about a female vulture and how she migrated to um, Venezuela and then she, her partner, her, the male bird, went to Costa Rica and then they would fly back to uh, Upper Michigan into Canada, and they would go back to where they uh, nested the year before. And uh, I found it really interesting that the whole book was based on this vulture who traveled back and forth, looked at the skies, waiting for her partner to come back, and that they went through the life cycle again, having baby, you know, ha having the eggs in the nest, building the nest, having the eggs, then hatching the, and having the fledglings, and how then the birds flew off to South America once again. It was really a very, very interesting book. And really, uh, I thought a different kind of, of book about birds. Uh, it was really a nonfiction book, but uh, Katie got into the head of this female vulture, I, I really believed, and I think you could feel like you yourself were soaring above the, you know, with the wind currents flying south. It's a very, very worthwhile book. I really, um, in fact, I told everybody that I was going to buy it for myself. <laughs> And I wanted it in the library, in my library, because it is just really good. That's nice. Well, and you can see uh, the photo of Katie holding a, a vulture, and I think a juvenile vulture. Um, now, the reason why that picture is there is because she's also co-founder or founder of the Avian Conservation Center of Appalachia. Mm -hmm which is, is um, in, uh, in Western Vir yeah. West Virginia. And uh, that is a photo of her holding one of, I believe, one of the birds from there. Um, and uh, and that's, that center is located in Morgantown, West Virginia. Um, the next slide I have here uh, lists where you can purchase um, the book. And um, as well as on Amazon. So again, that's Vulture, The Private Life of an Unloved Bird by Katie Fallon. The next, uh, in November, uh, earlier, well, last week, uh, the Book of the Month program with the speaker and the book itself, the speaker was David Lindo, The Urban Birder. Uh, and that was really, really interesting. Uh, David is author of many articles and several books, and he came to us from Spain, where he's based, Extra Madura, Spain, and he spoke about how to be an urban birder, or the book of it. But, but, but really, what he what happened there was um, Gloria Ferris, our host, really asked David uh, to delve down into the into the um, the semantics of of how to be an urban birder and what that means. Uh, for example, how looking through the lens of the bird, um, and and he also spoke um, very honestly and uh, very deeply about how um, how looking through the lens of of a bird and specifically um, urban birding, i.e appreciating the wilderness that's all around you. Um, so you'll find it's, it's a really, really wonderful conversation between David and Gloria. And that all of these conversations are available on the Western Cuyahoga Audubon Society's YouTube channel. 
And then the next slide, I have how you can purchase it. We do have some copies of this book um, at Western Cuyahoga Audubon Society. And you can order them through the store at the website for a clean drop-off or pick-up. Uh, and so that gives a little more information about that. And um, then Gloria, when you're ready, we have the next the next slide I prepared is um, for uh, detailing the December speaker. Oh, okay. Well, we'll, we'll talk about um, I I have to apologize to anybody who is here that maybe thought we might have some more slides about. Uh, books and things, uh, but I was busy with uh, putting a baby crib together with my daughter today, so <laughs> we, we didn't, I didn't quite get uh, my uh, slides to Betsy in time to uh, get them in the slide deck, so uh, first I'm going to uh, put these into young into children and then into uh, kind of teenagers, younger preteens going age uh, years. But I did choose three books for uh, uh, to talk about for holiday gift giving. And one of my favorite books is The Owl Moon. Um, has anybody heard of the Owl Moon? Okay, most well, that is a book by Jane Yellen, but it's illustrated by John. Sh I can never say his name. Schoenherr, and the illustrations are just beautiful, and it is a read aloud book to little ones. And what little child is not just mesmerized by owls with those big eyes and you know they look like their head's going to turn all the way around and uh, so it's a very interesting book and the book actually is waiting when the child is old enough to go owling with um, his father I think it's his uh, father. It's been a long time since I read it. His father to owl at night looking for owls and listening to their cow calls and and how how that happens. So it's a very, very fun book uh, for kids and it's a little bit different, um, but it's kind of a way to just at a very early age get these kids interested in birding in a way. The next one I talked about is called The Big Book of Birds. And as you can imagine, it's a big book with all sorts of birds. I mean, that it's just page after page of all these books and they're brightly colored, uh, book birds, and they're all brightly colored. And what I really like is some of them one page is a page that looks like it's someone's backyard, and it has the bird feeder, and it has the water feature, the little bird bath, and it's got a big tree, and all these birds are on the ground, they're in the tree, they're in the bird bath, they're at the feeder, and there's all these illustrations of uh, captions underneath each each illustration of a bird saying what the bird is doing and what its need is and what its behavior is. So it's really, it's a book that can grow with children. It can start out as a picture book and you just kind of page through it and they, you know, you can use it for colors, you can use it for, you know, how many, you know, for counting. It, you can just, and then it grows with the child as to, well, what is that bird doing? What do you think it's doing? So it's a really, really good book for, for children. Um, he, he just really gives you a lot of insight uh, to the birding world uh, and makes it so a child can understand. And uh, I, I think that the best thing to do is just... <laughs> look on Amazon or, or do one of those things and just 
say children's books on birds and there are just um, I don't know make way for ducklings that was another one that my girls just loved and it's about a duck family with all the little ducks and where they go and how they go for food and then they come back and they get into the water and they swim around and then where did they nest and it's really really a, a, a really nice nice book and a lot of these children's books don't only not only um, tie the child to nature but it also sometimes gives a, a moral of the story or you know that waiting until you're old enough or um, just if something looks different and ungangly what is that I mean I think of the ugly duckling when it was the beautiful swan so there's a, a lot of uh, opportunity to at an early age to get um, uh, children interested there's one book that my daughter Katie had and I couldn't find it anywhere but it was called B is for bird and every page had a different bird on it a robin uh, a starling it had a, a wood duck I think and a mallard but it had all these different birds it was like a, a cardboard book but she loves to go through that and and pick out what which birds they were as she got older and and then she would read the book to me so I think that's always a good I think that's a good uh, value of a book is that when it can grow with a little one up to the age of four and and get them into that pre-reading readiness uh, can do a lot of things um, then my last last book I have is uh, is going to be um, bird watching for kids and uh, it's I've never seen it outside of the images and things that I saw on Amazon but it had a five-star review there were like 88 reviews and everybody loved it and it was called bird watching for kids and it's by George H Harrison and um, it it has all these projects for bur for uh, kids to do they're entertain they're, they entertain and yet it's a project that will attract a bird to their backyard mm -hmm. so they're learning how to uh, attract birds to their backyard and then it also explains why the bird needs what you're giving it to attract it and then when you attract the bird it talks about learning about the birds behavior and why birds uh, behave in certain ways like I think a nuthatch is one of the most interesting ones when they go head first down a chunk of the tree to find insects um, the other reason one of the other ones was that how does a woodpecker peck on wood in a tree without always having a terrible headache so it talks about the cushioning and and how how it has a built-in kind of part of its structure that helps it not do that so that's the other thing um, the other thing I saw for kids and I thought it was really really great was um, a bird log for kids mm -hmm. in the bird log I mean there's uh, you can do a daily list of what you see in your backyard it's got a page that you do your life list when you see a bird for the first time and where you saw it and what it was doing and and all of that um, and it has great illustrations the illustrations are by a Deanne uh, Barreau and she's illustrated these pages so that it's actually 
when the young person fills it in, it's like a journal. So it has all these stories. It has uh, a sketch pad where you can sketch uh, what a bird that you don't recognize looks like, and it tells you the different shapes of bird beaks, uh, the different kinds of tails, the fan tails, the straight tails, the you know ones that flip flip up, and and all of that, and you can put all these things in for that bird and then you can go back if you don't have your field guide with you and um, do that. So um, so that's kind of I think the media, intermediate kind of books for uh, uh, kids. Um, then I was going to talk about teenagers because I think you want you want all levels of teenagers, the ones who are just discovering birds and think, you know, oh, would this be interesting? Would I like to do this? Um, so the first book I had is called Everyday Birds. So it talks about very familiar um, birds that you can see every day. Um, and I think it's a great place for urban birders, uh, like urban kids can do it, suburban kids could do it. They could get together on a meetup online and talk about the different birds that they see in their backyard or in the park close to their house or um, in a parking lot, in a shopping center. It, do, are there trees? Are there you know, are there bushes? Where where do the birds congregate? What kinds of birds do it? What are they eating? Are they eating French fries like on the front of David's book? Or has the um, landscaping company put in uh, plants that have berries that they can eat or in um, trees that have insects on them that they can so you can see if you get any insect eaters and things. So it's an every everyday book. It's an everyday birds, and it kind of starts out slow. Um, so I think that that might be the first book that I would buy for a teenager to see if they had an interest in it. If they did, I suppose the best thing, the next one I would do would be Peterson's Field Guide to Birds. I think that that is a very good book for uh, a novice birder or an intermediate birder. Uh, um, expert birders may want to have a little bit more um, <coughs> kind of uh, overall what kind of habitat, what kind of uh, where would you find them, what do they eat, that kind of thing, and that might be a, a bigger book. But that brings me to David Silby, and um, I'm a real lover of David Silby's books. I have his uh, uh, first guide to birds, and then I also have his guide to trees. But I think the, the one I want now is uh, Silby's guide to birds, and it is supposedly for the novice all the way up to the expert. Um, I think that the my my dear husband I have always thought I'm smarter than I am and that I know more than I do <laughs> and he bought me that first bird book but it was really a a good a good book and I love it and I put my life birds in that book I write in there and say if I see a bird that I've never seen before in nature I put it in. And I got the brown footed booby that I was able to put in there this uh, fall thanks to um, Michelle Broises, our virtual bird guide, uh, field trip guide, uh, choosing Lake Nemesilla um, as our, our place to go in uh, September. I believe it was. September was that book. Or maybe it was August. It was August. It was August. And so. So anyway, um, basically, um, 
that's what I have, I, I would uh, encourage everybody to look at WCAS.org and look at the book uh, club uh, square and click on it and see these recorders that we have of our book club uh, author discussions. They have been very, very interesting and we've learned a lot about the passion that people have for birds and why they do what they do and and what what's next what they what they want to do next and and how they believe that the love they have for birds has impacted their lives in a very um, special way so um, that's about all I have for tonight um, I do want to mention that after Thanksgiving, we are going to have the day after Thanksgiving, the Friday. It used to be called Black Friday. I don't think it's going to be called that anymore because they started those sales two weeks ago. And, <laughs> they, and we now have a stay-at-home order. So I think that uh, we'll be ordering more gifts online. And if you order from Amazon.com, did you know that Western Cuyahoga Audubon Society is one of their uh, charities mm -hmm. that you can sign up and if you buy things from Amazon, we'll get a small donation every time you use Amazon. So that's a good thing to, to remember. It's kind of like a paying it forward, giving it forward. You're giving, you know, you're giving a gift, you're buying a gift, and then you're giving a little bit to a grassroots organization that you believe in. Uh, but on the Friday after Thanksgiving, on the 27th, we're having Nancy Howell has put together a really neat list of 19 birds that you can go and um, download her list and go out with a um, friend or members of your family. I think that would probably be the best thing now is to keep it within your household if you can and um, go out on that Friday and look for those 19 birds and then she's added a bird of your choice for that 20th bird. So we'll be having a meetup afterwards to talk about this and share the birds that we found and uh, but Nancy will be telling us if anybody was lucky enough to find all 19 or how many we did find and if there were a, there was a huge group of birds the same bird that we all saw or that there was just little stragglers that are still on their way south um, so um, I think that'll be a really interesting event and I encourage everybody to, to take part in that. If you're a member, it's $5, and if you're a non-member, it's $7. And uh, it's just another small way that we're trying to uh, keep our coffers kind of jingling with uh, coins. Um, and then in December, Nancy has really put together a uh, Christmas bird count month oh there do I need to go I do I guess but anyway I was talking about the uh, Christmas bird count uh, there will be uh, a bird identification for people there will be a kickoff where we'll try to just meet together and everybody sign up for either your backyard or a, a place in the Lakewood Circle and then in January we'll be getting all together and Nancy will compile it as she always does and it would be nice if we all got a dessert and coffee and sat in front of our computer and we discussed how much fun that was. So Betsy is telling me that my hour is almost up. <laughs> so our December Book of the Month program is going to be Laura Erickson, another author from Ohio. And we do try to promote our um, <clears throat> our authors here in Ohio. Oh, she's not. 
She's uh, Laura Erickson is from Minnesota, I think. Oh, I thought she was from Ohio. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Laura, it's too bad you don't live here. <laughs> No, I'm teasing. Um, actually, it's called The Love Lives of Birds, uh, Courting and Mating Rituals. Now, that should be a very, very in interesting topic, and it will be uh, very interesting to hear Laura on how she decided on this subject for her book. Um, it it proves to be another really kind of exciting uh night um december 13th from seven to eight and just to let you know uh because of the holidays um hanukkah and uh christmas and kwanzaa uh we are not going to have a book discussion for december but we will start again in january with a book discussion with an author uh, an author interview and then we will also have a book discussion and I hope if you are listening to the recording that we made for tonight that you will think about joining us in person because it is just fun when Drina comes and Betsy and we all can talk about the books that we know and love so thank you for listening and watching us and we'll see you next month okay. Bye-bye. 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 Happy Thanksgiving. Oh, Thank happy you. Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah. Go out on Friday and walk that turkey off. Yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye.